wants to take on Amazon. He's settling on a marketplace called Noon that's already making headway in the Middle East, as CNN's John Defterius explains. It's a shopper's paradise, and Dubai Mall is among one of the world's largest. With its Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world, and spectacular shows, this retail and entertainment complex welcomes 80 million people every year. Today, China is the factory of the world. So Now the man behind these iconic buildings wants the region's millions of consumers to finally embrace online shopping. You're the man who built the Burj Khalifa and the Dubai Mall. People are probably thinking, what is he doing in the digital business? Well, I think I'm a man who run an investment company. I look for opportunities. Uh, and if the opportunities are right, so I'm in the food business, I'm in the real estate business, I'm banking, uh, but the digital economy is everything. In this vast warehouse on the outskirts of Dubai, you will find Noon, a six-month-old, $1 billion e-commerce startup. We think that the whole region needs, needs a player like us. We know these economies very well. We know the alleys. We know the, the issues. Uh, therefore, for us to set up operations is so, so easy. So I would say that we should really be able to, uh, to penetrate all these markets. And, I say, and, and to, be, to be honest, it's a lot of work. If you don't do it, I think the market will be cornered by one player. The one player he's referring to is the world's largest internet retailer, Amazon, who entered the Middle East market last year by buying local startup Souk. The arrival of Noon sees a major battle between the two as they dive into a totally underdeveloped e-commerce market. Online shopping only represents 2% of the retail sector in the Middle East, compared to 15% in most developed Western markets. It's a sector that's predicted to quadruple in the next two years. Naturally, competition will drive uh, market growth, will drive consumer choice, will drive consumer purchasing. So we expect uh, the market to grow at 35% uh, now to 24 billion by 2020 from about uh, five, six uh, uh, right now. There are several reasons as to why this has been a difficult market to break into. A lack of postal addresses and a consumer who wants to pay only in cash have hampered the emergence of a clear winner. But it's a market worth fighting for. The Middle East and North Africa region has a population of 381 million. Amazon Souk currently operates in Saudi Arabia, the UAE, Kuwait, and Egypt. Noon, who is in Saudi Arabia and the UAE, already has big expansion plans. Moving forward, we have to look at these uh, other Middle Eastern markets. I think we should really, we should not be very shy even to look a little bit uh, east and, you know, we should really look at, at Pakistan and countries like that because, you know, we've got 100 and 80, 190 uh, population out there. And I think if you were to go to North Africa, uh, the same thing, the base is quite, quite good uh, in that area as well. To compete with Amazon, Noon is linking up with eBay and will deliver any products bought on the U.S. tech giant site across the region later this year. It's also opening a logistics center in China, sourcing stock directly from manufacturers. And like Amazon, it also plans to enter the grocery market. Our aim is that you come to our, to our website on our app many times during the day, and grocery is a critical uh, part of your life and your family life. How long of a time frame do you think? I think uh, we should look at six months uh, from now uh, for us to start that business. And do, have you picked a partner for that? Uh, we have few. We are talking to few. Uh, I think within the coming six months we should, we should be uh, final. Either that or we buy somebody. Competition is heating up. This battle between a U.S. tech giant and a homegrown startup will be watched closely. So too will be the impact on the region's vast mall network. John Defterius, CNN Money, Dubai. When we return, Croatia versus England. A semi-final with the prospect of the winner going forward to the final of the World Cup and playing France. Inside Africa, in association with Zenith Bank. Along the Gulf of Guinea lies one of Ghana's most famous attractions, Elmina Castle. While the centuries-old structure is as grand as its picturesque surroundings, the castle itself is home to one of the darkest chapters in history. This is the door of no return where 
All the captives were made to go through before they get to the ship. Never to return. Never to return. It's a reminder of hundreds of thousands of lives lost and generations of enslavement. A story that forever shaped Africa and continues to be told today. The Cannes Film Festival, one of the largest international showcases of cinematic art. Arab filmmakers have been coming to Cannes since the mid-70s, 80s. And this year, the biggest presence of films from the Middle East since the festival began. It's a testament to how far Arab cinema has gone. This month, join Becky Anderson as we raise the curtain on film from the region. Inside the Middle East, next on CNN, in association with MISC.